Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers of Rahim TV, I am Hafiz Usman, your host, and we will be continuing the Ta'aleem of Fadali A'mal, written by Shaykh Muhammad Zakaria Kandal, wa rahmatullahi wa alayhi, continuing from the chapter of the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shaykh Zakaria rahmatullahi wa alayhi begins by writing, we have to read about the achievements of the Sahaba in their time, and the biggest achievement was in fact the result of their love for Allah Ta'ala and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Love as a matter of fact was a great dynamic force in the lives of the Sahaba It was this force that made them forego their luxuries, forget their lives, give up all their desires for wealth, ignore all afflictions, and have no fear of even death. There is no room for any other consideration except that of the Beloved in the heart saturated with love. May Allah Ta'ala through His grace grant us His own love and that of His Prophet wasallam, so that we may be blessed with devotion in His worship and have sense of comfort in all difficulties faced in His service. The first story, Abu Bakr an suffering for Islam. In the beginning, those who embraced Islam had to keep their faith secret as far as possible, as the Muslims were being constantly persecuted by the Quraysh. Even the Prophet ﷺ advised all new converts to practice Islam secretly so that they may not have to suffer at the hands of the Quraysh. When, however, the number of Muslims reached 39, Abu Bakr عنه, made a suggestion to the Prophet ﷺ for the open preaching and practicing of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ would not agree, but when Abu Bakr عنه, insisted, he gave his consent, and so all of them went to Hanin for tabligh. Abu Bakr began to speak, and the khutbah given by him was the first ever deli delivered in the annals of Islam. Hamza, the Prophet's uncle and the chief of martyrs, embraced Islam on that very day, while Umar came into Muslim fold on the third day of this address. No sooner did Abu Bakr start speaking that the idol idolaters and disbelievers from amongst the Quraysh fell upon the Muslims from all sides. Despite the fact that he was considered to be the noblest and most respectable of all the people in Mecca. Abu Bakr was beaten to such an extent that his nose and ears and his entire face was covered with blood. He was kicked, thrashed with shoes, trampled under feet and handled most roughly and savagely. He became unconscious and half dead. None hoped that he would ever survive this brutal onslaught. Banu Tim, the people of his clan, came and carried him to his house. They also announced in the Haram that if Abu Bakr succumbed to the injuries, they would in retaliation take the life of Utbah ibn Rabi' who had taken the most active part in the attack. Abu Bakr remained unconscious the whole day. People around him shouted his name again and again to know if he was in his senses. But he would not speak. Late in the evening, however, he opened his eyes and showed signs of consciousness. As soon as he was able to speak, he inquired, How is the Prophet ﷺ? The people were most disappointed with him, and they said, How is it that despite all this calamity, and after virtually remaining in the jaws of death all day long on account of the Prophet ﷺ, as soon as he has come back to consciousness, he has nothing else to talk about but the Prophet ﷺ himself. They left Abu Bakr much disgusted at his devotion for the Prophet ﷺ. While they were satisfied that he was out of danger, they advised Umm Khayr, his mother, to give him something to eat. But least minding his food, Abu Bakr would excessively and impatiently ask for his mother the same question again and again. How is the Prophet ﷺ? On her showing ignorance about the welfare of the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr entreated her to go to Umm Jamil, Umar Umm's sister, and find out from her the latest news about the Prophet ﷺ. The mother could not refuse the request of her son in this pitiable condition and hurried to Umm Jamil anh's house to inquire about the welfare of Muhammad ﷺ. Like other Muslims of that time, Umm Jamil anh was also keeping her faith secret. She therefore concealed her knowledge about the Prophet ﷺ saying, Who is Muhammad and who is Abu Bakr? She said, Why should I know anything about them? I am however sorry to learn about the condition of your son. If you like, I can go with you to see him. Umm Khayr agreed and they both came to Abu Bakr 
on seeing Abu Bakr in that miserable condition, Umm Jamil anha, could not control herself and began to cry, saying, Woe to the kuffar for what they have done to the man or to a man like Abu Bakr May Allah punish them for their misconduct. Regardless of what Umm Jamil anha said, Abu Bakr anha had the same words on his lips. How is the Prophet Wasallam? Umm Jamil pointing towards Umm Khair, is it safe to say anything in her presence? Abu Bakr an, do not worry about her. Tell me quickly how the Prophet Wasallam is. Umm Jamil, he is quiet well. Abu Bakr an, where is he at this moment? Umm Jamil, he is at Arqam's place. Abu Bakr an, by Allah, I will not eat anything until I have looked at him. Now his mother was very anxious to feed him. She knew that when he had sworn by Allah Ta'ala he would not break his oath and therefore would not eat under any circumstances. She therefore agreed to take him to Arkham's place. She had to wait till the street was least frequented by the people and she was able to take him to the place undetected by the Quraysh. When they both reached Arkham's place, Abu Bakr saw the Prophet and clung to him weepingly, weeping profusely. The Prophet reciprocated and all the Muslims who were present there also began to weep bitterly over the condition of Abu Bakr Abu Bakr then introduced his mother Umm Khair to the Prophet وسلم, saying, She is my mother, O Prophet of Allah وسلم, Pray for her and, and induce her to accept Islam. The Prophet first prayed for her and then preached to her. She accepted Islam and there and then. Many people can claim to be lovers while in ease and comfort, but a lover is a real lover when he is able to prove his Love, even in the tribulations and adversity. The second story. Umar an's grief at the Prophet wasallam's demise. None can deny the proverbial valor, courage, and strength of Umar an, over whose mention, even after the lapse of 1400 years, hearts are struck with awe and respect. Islam could not be professed and preached openly before Umar an's coming into its fold. As soon as he embraced Islam, the Muslims started saving the Muslims started praying Salah in the Haram, as none could dare harm them with Umar an on their side. Notwithstanding all this, he could not bear the shock of the Prophet ﷺ passing away. So much so that he stood with his sword in his hand, utterly confused and bewildered, saying, I shall behead the person who says that the Prophet ﷺ has passed away. The Prophet ﷺ has only gone to visit his Lord, just as Musa ﷺ went to Tur. He will shortly return and cut off the hands and feet of those who are spreading the false news of his demise. On the other hand, Uthman was stunned with grief on this event. He could not utter a single word, even till the next day, and walked about as if bereft of speech. Ali too was in terrible grief. He was still and motionless. Only Abu Bakr for all his love of the Prophet as we have seen in the last story, stood firm as a rock against this terrible storm of grief and did not lose his mental composure. He calmly entered the Prophet ﷺ's house, kissed his forehead, and came back to the people. He called Umar to sit down and then began to address the people. He said, Whoso worship Muhammad ﷺ, let him know that Muhammad ﷺ has passed. And, so, and whosoever worship Allah Ta'ala should know that Allah Ta'ala is ever living and eternal. He then recited the following verse of the Qur'an. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما محمد إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسل أفإن مات أو قتل انقلبتم على أعقابكم ومن ينقلب على عقبيه فلن يضر الله شيئا وسيجزي الله الشاكرين Translation Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is but a messenger and messenger is the like of those who have passed away before him Will it be that when he dies or is slain you will turn back on your heels he who so turns back does not hurt Allah, and Allah Ta'ala will reward those who recognize the truth. As Abu Bakr was destined to be the Khalifa after the Prophet وسلم, it is significant that unlike other Sahaba, he behaved with the composure and patience that were needed on an occasion like this. Again, it was Abu Bakr alone who knew better than anybody else that the regulation regarding the burial inheritance of the Prophet when difference of opinion arose amongst the Sahaba whether the burial of place of the Prophet ﷺ was to be at Mecca or Medina or Jerusalem, 
It was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu who settled the difference by saying, on the authority of the Prophet وسلم, that the Prophets are buried where they have passed away. There were several other ahadith known only to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu that helped solve many other problems arising out of the death of the Prophet Some of these ahadith were, Prophets have no heirs, all that a Prophet leaves behind is sadaqah. Allah Ta'ala's curse is on the Amir who does not take proper interest and exercise proper care in the appointment of his deputies. Third, the state affairs shall remain in the custody of Quraysh. Story number three. An Ansari woman's anxiety about the Prophet ﷺ. In the Battle of Uhud, the Muslims suffered heavy, heavy losses and quite a large number of them were killed. When the sensational news of their heavy casualties reached Medina, the women came out of their houses eager, eager to know the actual details of these casualties. On seeing the crowd of people at a place, a woman of the Ansar anxiously inquired, she anxiously inquired, how is the Prophet ﷺ? When told that her father was killed in the battle, she uttered, Inna lillah, and impatiently repeated the same question about the Prophet ﷺ. This time she was told that her husband was no more, her brother was dead, and that her son was too slain. With ever-growing anxiety, she repeated the same question about the welfare of the Prophet ﷺ. She was told that he was safe and sound, but she would not rest and she was not content and insisted on seeing him herself. When at last she had satisfied her eyes with his sight, she said, O Prophet of Allah, every affliction is eased and every worry removed with the blessing of seeing you. According to another version, she herself clung to the Prophet Sallallahu robes and said, O Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are dearer to me than my parents. The death of my kinsmen has lost all its sting for me when I have seen you living. There are several incidents of this kind that occurred at the Battle of Uhud. It is perhaps for the large number of such incidents that different names have been reported by different narrators about these women. In fact, such incidents happened in large numbers with many women at the time. May Allah Ta'ala give us a tawfiq to display the same love that the Sahaba ajma'in had for the Prophet in this time. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.